enabling business to do things they couldn't even imagine doing before, right? But even though 5G accounts for almost two thirds of mobile connections across North America, many businesses are shy about jumping in with both feet with 5G. I, I understand that, you know, it's always wise to be cautious when you know, bringing in new technology. So it's a good thing you stopped by here, T-Mobile, because that's our business. We help organizations like yours of all shapes and sizes embrace 5G and help them understand its powerful potential. We connect them to the largest and fastest 5G network in the country. That's undisputed. But more important for today's discussion, we help businesses figure out which 5G tools they need to succeed, like AI, IT, uh, IoT, cloud-driven tech, a lot more. And we show them how those tools can help solve their specific business challenges, your specific challenges, and your success. But most important, T-Mobile helps businesses prepare for a technological future that includes 6G and quantum computing. Yeah, I know what you're thinking. You're thinking quantum computing, 6G, oh, that is awesome, that's awesome. But that's some real world 5G information that I can use today. That's what you're thinking, right? I like the way you think. So that's why we assembled that crack team of 5G industry experts to share their informed thoughts and experiences on a wide range of topics, including 5G nomadic private networks, 5G standalone networks, so much more. Like I told you, practically no two are the same. We are talking 13 different presentations from 16 different sets of speakers. So you come by again on the hour and the half hour, you're gonna see something different and learn something more. And of course, you know, you'll win another gift, right? Sound good? All right, good. Well, right now we're gonna introduce to you Jill Fisher and Sunil Kumar Kopal Reddy. Now, both are senior product managers at T-Mobile for Business. Now, Sunil and Jill, they both like to stay on the move. Now, Sunil likes to ride his motorbike, and Jill, she likes to go hiking with her Pyrenees mountain dog. What's your dog's name, by the way, Jill? Sally? Have you named your motorbike, Sunil? No, I'm just kidding, I'm sure you didn't. <laughs> what was that? Black Beauty, so he did name it. Arrow's just setting him up to be silly, and he didn't name it. All right, you guys are the perfect one to be doing the presentation because they're on the move, right? And we're talking nomadic private networks for NPNs powered by 5G. You know, 5G powered NPNs, they are disrupting the broadcast industry by redefining live event coverage, eliminating fiber constraints, and prioritizing traffic for high quality broadcasts. So get ready to experience some real world use cases that demonstrate how 5G powered NPNs are reshaping the broadcasting landscape. All right, come on up guys and hit them up. <laughs> thanks Joe. Oh, thanks Joe, that was awesome. All right. Wanna go over there? You wanna go? go there, yeah. Hi all, my name is Jill Fisher. Hey guys, good afternoon, this is Sunil. And we're gonna be talking about nomadic private networks. Yeah, private networks. Yeah. Um, today's agenda, we're going to be talking about some key points in the broadcast industry. I'm going to be talking a little bit about the challenges in the broadcast That's industry. Right. And then Sunil is going to take it off and talk about some examples. The solutions we have, yep. And just a quick intro. I am a product marketing lead for technology and media vertical here at T-Mobile. And I am senior product manager uh, leading the broadcasting media industry to identify solutions for cord cutting. Great. So... Let's first look at these two stats. The first stat is that 48% of the media and broadcast professionals plan to move their workflow to a cloud-based solution in 2023 and in the future. That is a huge number. I'm sure that you guys might know that, that that is the future of broadcast. And in the future of broadcast, the consumer end is that 46 million Americans will move to cord cutting in 2023. I was gonna ask a question if anybody here has already joined me in cord cutting. Anybody raise their hand? Two people. Oh, All right, three. There you go. I'm also a cord cutter. <laughs> so really the need for broadcast experiences that are dynamic and of high quality is on the rise. We all watch really high quality broadcast, whether it's sports, um, pride parades, we have live TV. Really, we want high quality uh, broadcast. And flexibility is really limited when it comes to broadcast technology. Uh, broadcasters are very much tethered and they are very much not nimble and flexible when they're producing um, their live television. So really real-time real, t real -time sharing of production files is essential and we know that cloud-based technology is on the rise. That makes things flexible and scalable and cost-effective. 
So some challenges. Um, I have three here, but there are many. These are three key ones that we really see. One is bandwidth. Um, just with the shift to digital platforms, really ensuring that broadcasters have ensured transmission speed when they are going through that live, tech, uh, live processing. And then production costs. So production, producing high quality content can really be expensive. We know that that eats up budgets. Um, as well as infrastructure. So just building and maintaining the necessary telecommunications infrastructure, it can be really costly. So where does that leave us for the future? And that is where Sunil's gonna talk. Yep, uh, let's talk about this. So all the problems which uh, Jill mentioned here adds to this. So live broadcasting, what do we need for live broadcasting? We need good bandwidth, we need good latency, and we need to be cost effective. How do we do that? We know like uh, in the current system, what we, if you want to do all these things, the amount of fiber being laid for any event, the amount of uh, expenses we end up adding is huge. And if COVID situation taught us anything, we know it's not scalable in real time, right? So how do we do that? We do that by going wireless. Uh, let's be clear, right? We can only bend physics so much more you do, you'll break physics, which we cannot do, obviously. So with wireless, there are some compromises, but for a human eye, what we need, we can get to that point. And how do we do that is our 5G private networks. 5G private networks will help you in live broadcasting, whereby like you reduce cost. How do you reduce cost? Is by reducing the actual crew you want on the site, or uh, reduce the fiber optics which you need, and that takes you to uh, next broadcasting level. Virtual production. So virtual production is something interesting, right? So you set up your uh, equipment somewhere, and how do you do that? You don't have to send your crew. And if you see the camera over there, that's controlled remotely. The operator is just standing there to make sure the connection is there for this event. But the camera control, like zoom in, tilt, everything is done remotely through our 5G network. That's a Sony PTZ camera, which helps us to do that. Remote production. So with the online streaming, everything, there's so much we do. And uh, all that, again, the capacity, the bandwidth we get, uh, the latency, low latency we get, all that helps to get to this production, remote production seamlessly. So how do we make that happen? How do we enable this? How do we activate this? That's through our private 5G network. So we bring core network access everything to you guys, to your event, and we manage that service end to end so that you can do whatever you want to solve your use cases in that media space, right? So get a production uh, network to you guys, roll it over from event to event, then implement all those things, to work with you guys, what is your use case? Good thing about this private network is it's not shared by the broader macro or broader public. So the advantage we have here is like, you know, we can customize the network to meet your business needs. And then along with that, with multiple cameras in the event, we can also set prioritization for those cameras so that you know, hey, I need, there is a camera here and this camera needs higher priority, but there is another camera like a fan camera and that can be on low priority. We can do all the customization on private networks. That's the beauty, that's the scalability, that's the flexibility we get on that. Uh, here it shows a depiction of uh, uh, live events, say like uh, indoor stadium or like football stadium, all those things here. So what else? So going away from live network, coming to production, so we can set up like uh, on-prem on uh, mech servers, we can have our private network, network connected to that, and we have the production cameras and you know like uh, VR, uh, HMD devices connected, all these, you know, like all data hoggers. And the bandwidth we have with uh, 5G private networks, millimeter, all those solves that. So, all right, Jill? Yeah, so there is a demo that Sunil will go be standing over. Um, yep. But really, this is just a start of the conversation of how broadcasters can help um, just untether and become flexible in their production. And we know that that is a huge need for all of you. So thank you for joining us. And if you want to come check out more, we'll be over there at the live demo. Yeah. Let's send it over to Joe. All right. Thank you very much. Round of applause for these two. What a nice job. You guys can come on down. It's like a fashion show. Oh, I get one of them. Yeah. All right. 